Hi and welcome. My name is Will Vanderlinden. I'm on the security team here at ITS Partners. I'm a certified semantic technical specialist as well as an authorized semantic consultant. Our security team is focused on endpoint products. We're looking at DLP, data loss prevention, as well as uh, encryption, full disk encryption or messaging encryption with uh, email or instant messaging. Uh, another thing that we're concerned with or focused on is uh, endpoint protection uh, that combines antivirus, anti-spyware, which collectively we call malware, along with a few other products. Uh, a little bit about ITS partners. We are a semantic national partner as well as a semantic platinum partner. We are also a semantic master specialized partner. Not too long ago in a Q&A, some questions came up from our customers about two technologies, application control and device control. And it seemed to us that it'd be a good idea to maybe throw together this quick little video to kind of explain that a little bit. Uh, both of these technologies are part of semantic endpoint protection. We'll call that SEP. And uh, SEP is, those are just two of the technologies in SEP. SEP is a larger product than just that. SEP includes antivirus, anti-spyware. Uh, there's a client-based uh, desktop firewall, as well as an intrusion prevention system, or IPS. So the application control, device control, let's look at those a little bit. Device control is probably the simpler of the two. It's uh, basically a rule set with an exception. So uh, it, it seems very simple at the outset. You say, well, I want to prohibit a device from operating, and then I want to make an exclusion. And to a large degree, that's correct. But where uh, device control really shines is that you can individually, uniquely identify a device to add to the exception list. So, for example, you say, I want to stop USB devices from running. Why would you want to do that? Well, think Stuxnet. Uh, Stuxnet was believed to have been introduced via an infected uh, USB drive. So if we say, well, we want to turn off USB devices, you come to the conclusion pretty quickly that, well, wait a minute, on an awful lot of computers, the keyboard and the mouse is a USB device. So we can add an exception for that. Pretty easy to do. But if we think about it a little further, we might have a situation where we have all the USB devices are blocked, but we have one corporate approved flash drive that we want to allow. Can we do that? And the answer is yes. Because in device control, we can block a class of devices, for example, USB devices, but then we can also get a little more granular in that and we can say, well, we want to allow a particular device. And then we'll get the unique ID of that device and add that to the exception list. So for example, your organization could buy hundreds or maybe thousands of identical USB drives and then just simply add that to the list of exceptions. USB devices are blocked except for the one that's uh, approved by the organization. And of course, keyboards and mice because we still want to have the human interaction with the computer. Okay, so let's take a look at application control. Application control at the first blush sounds like, well, I'm going to prevent an application from running. Can you do that? Sure you can. But we can get a little more granular than that, just like in device control. Application control is a little more complex. Don't let that frighten you away. The complexity also adds strength to the, uh, the, the actual technology behind it. So how can we use this and why would we want to use this? Well, Here's an example that, that comes up from time to time. Well, we get a call and says that uh, a customer calls and says, gee, we have all these toolbars that are automatically being, well, maybe not automatically, but unwittingly being installed in our browser. Poor old Frank over in, in accounting, uh, he calls and says, I have five of these toolbars installed in Internet Explorer, and 
I don't know how they got there, and I quite frankly would like to get rid of them all. So how can we do that? Uh, can we troll the internet for a while and come up with all the names of the executables for all the toolbars and add them onto a blocked list? Yeah, we can do that, but application control is more than just about blocking an application. It's about controlling the application. So we will allow Internet Explorer to run, but we'll create a rule that will disallow any toolbars to be installed. And the way that does, uh, they, the way that happens is we're controlling actually the registry where that is uh, defined. So we can do that not only for Internet Explorer, we can do that for Firefox, we can do that for Chrome, or any browser that you like. Another example might be we're, we're concerned with uh, data leakage or data exfiltration, and we don't want someone to come in with a flash drive, stick it into the machine, and copy a file that they're working on, let's say it's an Excel file, copy it twice, once to the network share, once to the flash drive. We can control how Excel operates by disallowing writes to the USB device. So the user will start Excel, open the file, do whatever they need to do with the file. They can change it, they can edit, they can save the file to the network share, but if they try to save it to a USB drive, it'll fail. So we're not blocking Excel from running, we're controlling how it behaves. In a nutshell, those are these two uh, technologies, device control and application control. There are a couple things that I do need to say. Uh, SEP, uh, Semantic Endpoint Protection, comes in two versions, a small business edition and an enterprise edition. These two technologies, application control and device control, are not available on the small business edition. They're only available on the enterprise edition. Uh, one other thing I think I forgot to mention is configuring these uh, two technologies, device control and application control, is not done on the individual client. Rather, it's done from a centrally located machine. It's the semantic endpoint manager. That's where the configurations are made. So you're not running around with an army of uh, IT people configuring each individual machine. Rather, it's done at one point, and the policy is pushed out over the network to all the connected clients. So that's about all for me. I gotta wrap it up here. Uh, send me an email directly or call anybody here at ITS Partners. We're more than happy to help you with any questions you might have. Thanks again and thanks for your time.